This is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 15. I'm sorry, verse 13. But evil men and seducers so wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Ba'ashem Rekakwadash for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And there's no God beside him. Double honesty, the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit. And shalom to the elect when the most have given ears to hear. This lesson, you know, is going to go into this topic of uh, how the Apostle Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit by the Lord and therefore could not be the author of confusion. Now, that's kind of a long topic. I mean, that's kind of a long title, so I may, Lord willing, be able to, uh, you know, come up with a way to uh, consolidate it. However, the inspiration comes by way of, um, I was watching the Elder Apostle Gabar's lesson, and he was doing a response to the brother out there, Tazama, the GMS Dallas, you know, in which uh, that brother, Tazama, was going into a statement, Alizar said, of the, Alizar of the uh, Sakari, he was saying how the Apostle Paul is the author of confusion. Right? And my thing is, how could that be so if the Most High wrote his works in the Book of Life for us to learn today? Right? So you're saying, essentially, you're saying that the Lord is the author of confusion. And we know that's not the case. All right, and be very wary of who you listen to. All right, it's not the time to be um, losing faith, but growing in the grace of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. I right, see these guys are pulling, you know, spiritually pulling off the skin off of Israel, and from that. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yahweh Shai. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, it pretty much says the same thing. And um, is that 2 Peter 1 and 21? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, same thing, which essentially is the Holy Spirit, which essentially is the Spirit of the, the, Spirit of the Lord sent down upon them, the Spirit of Understanding. Right? And it says, um, I'll read that again back at 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All right? And not only did the Lord bless the apostle Paul, all right, but he used the knowledge that he gave the Apostle Paul to preach unto, you know, different men. Um, who was it? Uh, Philemon, I believe, Titus, Tim um, the Timothy. You know, different men who whom. Uh, also have um, beautiful books in the, in the Bible. 
All right, but this is the book of Acts, chapter 9, and verse 13. Then Ananias, all right, and when you go into this story, Paul was knocked off the horse. All right, and he was blinded. And um, through the process of time, I believe it was, what, three days or something like that? Let me see. Uh, Acts 9 and 1. I'll start at the top. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest. Because Saul, I meant Paul, before he was called Paul, he was called Saul. Let me see. Let's look up those names, actually. I believe... So saw meaning desired, okay. The Hebrew origin, same as. Shaul. Okay, so. So it says, Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. So Paul, before he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, was a, um, you could say he was like, like a bounty hunter, you know. He was killing off and um, persecuting the prophets and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues. That if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I'm Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest. It is hard, is it hard for thee to kick against the pricks? And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no men. You know, and as a side note, it shows you that Paul... Willie really thought he was doing a good thing by persecuting the um the follow the the followers of Yahweh, the disciples. Right? And Saul arose because you know he immediately basically changed his ways once uh he got word from the Lord. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there were a certain disciples at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he seeth in a vision a man named Ananias coming. And I've seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. So Ananias is like, Lord, why are you helping this man out? He hates you. And he, you know, he brings, he's, he brings Great pain upon your followers. Why are you helping this man? Why do you want me to find him? You know? But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sakes. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahweh, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, 
have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. And essentially, what is the Holy Spirit? Let's go over to. um. Is that wisdom of Solomon 7. And 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. See passive and going through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. Right? Another uh, good point to prove that Apostle Paul was special. You know, he wasn't a um, forward individual, as some would have you believe. If you saying that Apostle Paul was an author of confusion... You said that he was a forward individual. All right. But the Lord saw something else in him. The Lord saw him to be a pure individual. All right. He just. Essentially, he had a time. The Lord appointed a time for him to, to uh, change his ways. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of God, and the image of his goodness. Right? So this is what the Holy Spirit is. The Spirit sent down from the heavens. Alright? Which, like a lot of times, um, you can read examples like, what is it? Luke, the first chapter... Um, comes to mind to what Gabriel again gave Gabriel who sent down from the heavenly father of course he gave understanding to Elias and to Mary concerning um the special children that they would that will be born unto them um oh the Holy Spirit the angel came down to Uriel I mean came down to Ezra which is the angel Uriel to show him of, of things to come, you know. Um, who else? Um, the Holy Spirit came to uh, the disciples in the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, um, concerning. Uh, the fraudulent activity that Ananias and Sapphira was doing. You know? So the Holy Spirit of understanding. Or the Spirit of understanding is the, the Spirit of understanding from the Lord, Yahweh Bashan Yahweh is the Holy Spirit. You know? Um, hey, the scriptures say how the, 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 the what is it? The, the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding both the evil and the good. Right? So that's the Holy Spirit. Let's go right here. Right? This is the book of James, chapter 3, verse 17. Right? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. This is the Holy Spirit. So lock you. Actually, we're going to start up at... um. Let's start at verse 11. Though he found and sent forth at the same place sweet water and bitter, 
Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You know, and by saying particular statements like that, it shows what fountain you are. All right, what do you yield? Who is a wise man and endureth with knowledge among you? Let him shoot out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, sensual, devilish. But what envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. You know? And it's, um, you know, those guys... It seems as if they're envious of the, the apostles. But the wisdom that is first, that is from above, is first pure. All right. So this is the whole, this is the this is the attributes of someone that has the Holy Spirit. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality, and without hypocrisy. All right? So the Apostle Paul, as we just read, as he was anointed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, by Yahweh Shai, might I add, all right, there's no way that he could be the author of confusion. All right? Again, as we read, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. All right. This wisdom was given by Yahweh Shai, who is sitting on the right hand side of Yahweh. That wisdom from above. And without hypocrisy, without confusion. All right. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And as you go through the writings of the Apostle Paul, all right, it's consistent. With that of the Old Testament, all right, which the Lord uh, again spake through those men, you know, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and so on and so forth. So, if that shall to the elect, 